Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Mark Ruffalo was talking about the new Hulk movie he's been working on for the past few years at Marvel and why it's taken so long to actually get it made. So we'll break it all down. But it finally sounds like they're actually doing something about it in the wheels of bureaucracy have just been turning extremely slow. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. They're also releasing a bunch of Marvel and Star Wars shows on Blu-rays recently from Disney+. Plus. Like, they're finally doing the Blu-rays, so we'll give away a couple of copies between now and Christmas. We've got the What If Season 2 episodes coming up real soon, too. Hulk will be a big part of those. It seems like he might be in a couple episodes, but the trailer footage shows him in what looks like the 1602 episode, so I'll talk about that at the end of the video. They got a bunch of Hulk-related stuff happening, especially in Captain America 4, which is going to be coming out in 2025 now. But recently, Mark Ruffalo was promoting his new movie, Poor Things, and talked about all these Hulk solo movie things that apparently Marvel told him he's not supposed to talk about, giving that full spoiler bros energy. Once a spoiler bro, always a spoiler bro. This is the clip of him talking about that Hulk movie he's been working on. I got to ask you about the Hulk. Yeah. NBC Universal and Disney recently made a deal for Hulu. We know the Hulk movie rights for a standalone picture have been kind of complicated. Has that yeah. changed anything? Um, <laughs> I've been asked not to, not to comment on it, um, that specifically. Uh, I mean, hopefully one day they'll, they'll, they'll work it out. I think it would be, I think it could be really cool. And I've been th putting a lot of thought into what it could be to be cool. So the way he talks about it, he's got that next Hulk movie figured out for the most part. And the only thing that's still holding them up from actually rolling cameras on it is the ongoing legal problems between Marvel, Disney, and Universal. The main problem he references is that Universal's contract for the Hulk characters is really specific. It basically gives them the first rights of refusal to release, like distribute, any Hulk movie of any kind with any Hulk-related characters. That basically means that Hulk has to be in the title of the movie. Like, this is the chart of the characters that it gives them control over, but it's only for the movies. Notice how Marvel controls most of, most of their characters with, like, the little bubble here for Sony and all the Spider-Man sharing stuff that they have going on for the past several years. Even though it seems like Universal controls all the Hulk characters, it's only for the movies, like I said, not for the TV shows. That's why Marvel was able to release the She-Hulk episodes and put the Bruce Banner Hulk and Scar Son of Hulk during that. I know I've been away on Sakaar for a while. I'll tell you all about it. But first, I have someone here that I'd like you all to meet. This is my son, Scar. That's the main reason why Kevin Feige has only been using Hulk in big Avengers movies or big crossover movies as a smaller character like Thor Ragnarok because his name isn't in the title of the movie, so it doesn't fall under that universal contract. So they're basically taking big Hulk stories and like breaking them up and putting them in a bunch of other movies or like breaking them across several different movies. So the idea is that Universal doesn't have the rights to make a Hulk movie, they just have the rights to distribute a finished Hulk movie, and Disney, Marvel, don't want to give them all the money that they would earn from releasing any kind of Hulk movie. The Spider-Man deal gives Marvel the rights to actually make the Spider-Man movie, Sony just takes a big, big percentage of the box office profits, and they have a big say in what happens during that movie. So the idea that Mark Ruffalo keeps talking about, and he says this in most of his interviews where he talks about Hulk movie-related stuff, until Marvel works out a deal with Universe, like until the lawyers get done slap-fighting each other, they won't actually start filming that next Hulk solo movie. But it sounds like they basically have the story for it, and a lot of the shows and movies that they've been doing now recently, and they have coming up in the next couple years, help set that Hulk solo movie up. You might remember Mark Ruffalo talking about this Hulk solo movie a couple years ago, like he's been working on this for a long, long time. Usually when people refer to that next Hulk solo movie, they just keep calling it World War Hulk. It wouldn't be the exact same comic book version of that story, but they're using a lot of elements from that story in current Marvel movies right now, mostly Captain America 4, Brave New World, and the She-Hulk post credit scene with Scar, son of Hulk. A lot of people wondered why they would introduce Hulk's son from the Planet Hulk storyline all of a sudden. They didn't really reference that during the events of Thor Ragnarok, and that was largely based on the events of Planet Hulk. The whole idea is that there was this missing period of time, like about a two-year period of time, that Hulk was only Hulk and Banner's personality was subsumed and really wasn't aware that much of what Hulk was doing for that whole time period. And that was when Scar, son of Hulk, was conceived and eventually born. So that's why Banner was able to come out during the events of Thor Ragnarok not knowing that Scar existed. 
But a lot of people at the time of this She-Hulk post credit scene are like, is this for Young Avengers setup? Like, is Scar going to be on that team that Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel is putting together? More recently, we saw, is he going to be in Captain America 4 as part of the Red Hulk Thunderbolt Ross storyline? At the time, the report is that they introduced Scar with the intention of paying off his storyline in the next Hulk solo movie, like way further down the road. Mark Ruffalo said that he'll keep playing the Bruce Banner Hulk as long as Marvel will have him too. But I think part of the idea is that they're building out the Hulk universe of characters from the comics, wanting to go deeper on the Hulk family in future movies and TV shows. And it's not like they're going to put Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner Hulk in like 10 different movies and series all at the same time. So you just need more of those Hulk related characters. That's why they're finally doing Thunderbolt Ross Red Hulk during Captain America 4. They kind of set up that storyline even starting as far back as the Incredible Hulk Edward Norton version of the movie. God damn it, I want! What's inside of him? All the people that made that movie, even Edward Norton, said that originally it was supposed to be a trilogy of movies and like the leader was going to be the main villain of the second movie. But that was when Marvel had other people distributing their films before Disney started doing all that themselves. I think part of the idea is that by the time they got to that third Hulk solo movie, that's when Thunderbolt Ross would have become Red Hulk and he would have been the main villain of that film. But like they just introduced She-Hulk, now Scar, son of Hulk. They also just released a scene showing that they brought back Liv Tyler's Betty Ross from the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk movie for Captain America 4. She's here at a funeral scene that Sam Wilson's new Falcon Captain America is at. The funeral might be like a fake out done by Thunderbolt Ross and that's why she's come because it's a funeral for her father. We know that they're turning him into Red Hulk during the movie. He's going to be played by Harrison Ford. They've recast the character, but it's still meant to be the original version of the character. And there is a lot, a lot of Hulk-related stuff happening in Captain America 4. Like, the leader is also back from the Incredible Hulk movie, supposed to be the main villain, if not one of the main villains. He's got green hands and all the behind-the-scenes, so it seems that they're going full comic book leader with him, too. He'll probably be the one to turn Thunderbolt Ross into Red Hulk. He was part of the Intelligentsia group in the comics that turned Thunderbolt Ross into Red Hulk in the comics as well too, which came out of the World War Hulk storyline. But here's the thing, even though there's all this Hulk stuff happening in the movie, the main conflict isn't going to be Hulk versus Red Hulk. It's still going to be like the new Falcon version of Captain America versus what seems like Red Hulk. All the Bruce Banner related Hulk stuff just seems like it's happening in the background. They're also supposed to be paying off what happens with that giant dead celestial from the Eternals movie, Tiamat, who's been just chilling out in the Indian Ocean on the other side of the world this whole time. That's supposed to set up this adamantium MCU plot if they haven't changed anything leading into Weapon X, the new MCU Wolverine down the road, related stuff. Not the Hugh Jackman version of Wolverine in Deadpool 3 or Avengers 6 Secret Wars. Like, I think this Tiamat Adamantium Celestial related stuff won't be till like Marvel Phase 7. They'll just slowly start setting that up in the background. So at least right now, it just sounds like they're using a lot of the Captain America 4 storyline to further the Bruce Banner Hulk story, eventually culminating that in what would be the next Hulk solo movie, like a World War Hulk type of movie down the road. My early theory right now about why Hulk would go off the chain so hardcore that the rest of the heroes of the world, even the villains, would all band together to try and stop him would have to have something to do with his son, Scar of Hulk. Like, if his life was threatened, that might cause him to lose control. Because the whole thing, like they showed during She-Hulk, he is like super zen now. Like, what would cause him to completely lose control? I think they tried to tease that a little bit during She-Hulk, like they fought a little bit during that first episode, but it still seems like he is totally zen right now. Like something would have to happen to Scar for him to completely lose control. My early assumption right now is that unless something really big changes behind the scenes with Marvel and Universal the next couple years, we probably won't see that next Hulk solo movie until after Avengers 6 Secret Wars sometime during Marvel Phase 7. But here's the thing, as much as that sucks, that means that we will be able to see a Hulk versus Wolverine movie too, because by that time, we'll have all the core X-Men characters, we'll have all the Fantastic Four characters, so if they also want to make a mini Avengers movie of it and do like a bigger World War Hulk style movie, they can actually do a more comic book accurate version of that with the Sentry character, with the Fantastic Four, with him spanking all the X-Men characters. It'd be way harder for them to do that if they were to do that solo Hulk movie before Secret Wars. But let me know in the comments what kind of stories and characters you want to see in that next Hulk solo movie. The other real big reminder is in a couple weeks, we'll get the What If Season 2 episodes. Like I said, all the trailer footage of Hulk seems like it's from the 1602 episode, but he might be in a couple episodes. During the 1602 comics, he was actually a supporter of the throne at the time of King James I, who was the successor of Queen Elizabeth. 
But here's the thing. I think they're doing a slightly different version of 1602 for the What If Season 2 episode, and they're going to go full meta with it, saying that Hela is actually ruling over either Great Britain or the world because Kate Blanchett played both Hela in the MCU, and she played a version of Queen Elizabeth I, and Queen Elizabeth I's reign basically ended around the time 1602 began in the comics. So you have Kate Blanchett giving a lot of Queen Elizabeth I energy and Hela energy at the same time. The circle of Easter eggs is now complete. I'll start naming giveaway winners in my next couple of Marvel videos too, just periodically throughout the next couple of weeks. I'll just keep the giveaway running through all my What If Season 2 episodes too. Everyone click here for that new Deadpool 3 and Wolverine video with all the X-Men, and click here for that brand new Blade trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.